which hasn't been revealed because the local yeah. thing they would never get the get justice because maybe if a British army officer is involved. What do you have to say about that? Well, that concerns me enormously and what I've just said to representatives of the community and what the Secretary of State for Defence, Ben Wallace, and I have made absolutely clear to everybody who works with the British Ministry of Defence and the British Armed Forces is that if there are further allegations that come to light, absolutely no stone will be left unturned in making sure that we provide all of the information necessary for the Kenyan authorities to investigate those claims. The UK has nothing to hide here. We want these investigations to be dealt with as quickly as possible. We want those responsible to be brought to justice because Agnes and her family have already had to wait too long for these cases to be resolved. We need that now to be investigated and brought to the courts here in Kenya as quickly as possible and any further allegations that come to light will be dealt with with the same urgency on our part. Last question. Of course. Um, have you met Agnes family? At least the ones taking care of the baby and had any discussions with them? No, I haven't. Um, but I think that it would be entirely appropriate for uh, somebody from the British mission here in Kenya to do that. If I had the time in my program, I think I would. Uh, I think that it is perfectly possible. In fact, I think it's important for the UK government to show our solidarity with Agnes's family, our belief that she has a right to justice, her daughter has a right to justice. And I think it's perfectly possible that we can meet without prejudicing the case and without admitting culpability. Uh, and I'd like the team here uh, on the British mission to look at how we might do that in the very near future. Um, so. Nicholas, come here from the Daily Mission. Now, uh, the UK has pledged its uh, cooperation uh, with your main investigation and the case of Agnes. Does that include allowing Kenya to extradite uh, the suspects and the witnesses in this case uh, of the prosecution here in Kenya? Well, I mean, these are uh, legal matters that will need to be considered in time. But my, I think that the Secretary of State for Defence has been clear that if the investigation leads to charges against a British service person, that he will make sure that the Kenyan investigation and legal proceedings are fully supported. I have to be honest with you and say I'm not immediately clear right now on the jury, on the um, the uh, arrangements for extradition between the UK and Kenya. But absolutely everybody in the UK government is aware of how Agnes's case has affected the Kenyan public, and we want you to know that we take that very seriously. We want justice to be done for her. Uh, also, the of course. Kenyan parliament, a section of the country yesterday saying that if uh, the suspects are not uh, tried in Kenya, they are not extradited uh, to Kenya, they are going to cancel the military part between Kenya and the UK. What's your take on that? Well, your parliament is sovereign and your parliamentarians may make whatever judgment they wish to make. I think that that uh, would cause a lot of problems to the people that I've met with this evening because the message that I got from them was very clear. They and their community are angry about what happened to Agnes. They are angry that there are allegations that British service people were involved uh, in that murder. But at the same time, they recognize that Batter here in Nanuki in Laikipia County is a big cause source of employment. It brings lots of value into the local economy. And so the message that I just had from the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce here in Manuki is please don't shut the gates. Please don't keep yourselves to yourselves. Stay. Keep investing in our community because the jobs that you create and the businesses that you support really value it. Now that is a balance. That doesn't mean that I take Agnes's case any less seriously. It is my top priority right now. We need to get things moving with the investigation and the UK MOD needs to make sure that we're providing all of the information necessary. But I would also say to my parliamentary colleagues here in Kenya that they need to listen to the business people here in the community in Manuki who see the value of Batuk and see the value of our training mission here. And they need to speak to the Kenyan Armed Forces, the Kenyan Air Force and the Kenyan Navy who are benefiting from working alongside the British Army, the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy. The UK-Kenya relationship is big, it is important, it is strategic, and a part of Africa that is looking increasingly uncertain and unstable. I get politics, I'm a politician too,
but I hope that they can see the bigger picture and that we can prioritise justice for Agnes, not politics. Go on quickly, then I must go over here. Why did it take for a media agency to say for the British government to act on the growing cases of misconduct from their personal respect in foreign countries? And what specific actions have been taken so far? Well, why has it taken so long, I think, is something that we should all reflect on. Uh, there are parts of the delay that are made here in Kenya, and there are parts of the delay that are made in London, and I know that politicians in both countries will want to ask some very challenging questions of ourselves and our officials to understand why this has taken so long. What happens now, from the UK part, is that the Secretary of State for Defence has been absolutely clear with the Chief of the General Staff, who leads the British Army, with the Provost Marshal, who is responsible for policing within the British Armed Forces, that there will be no delay whatsoever in providing whatever evidence is asked for by the Kenyan investigation. And I know because one of the suspects in the case is no longer serving in the British Armed Forces, that the British civilian police, the Lancashire police, are also involved in the investigation. They too are aware of the importance and they too are acting with all speed to make sure there's no further delay. Um, sir? Yes, um, Hassan Bidami from Citizen TV. I'm asking um, how many suspects are we looking at um, from your side as and when extradition happens? How many suspects are you going to bring here for prosecution? I I'm not at liberty. I hope you forgive me and I hope you'll understand why it would be inappropriate for me to comment on an ongoing investigation. I can answer all of your questions about the urgency. I can answer all of your questions about the importance that we place on it within the UK Ministry of Defence. But given that we've waited for nine years for this to come to justice, the last thing that I would want to do now is to misspeak and say something silly that then prejudices a court case, which means that justice ends up not being possible. So. Oh, Madam, forgive me, you're behind the light. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Mugala from Sky News. So what, what would the UK government do to ensure that incidents such as this do not occur again, not only here, but in other places where your armed forces have a presence? Well, I mean, look, the, the easiest answer, and I have to say that it was our immediate answer in the MOD in London, is that we should say to the commander here in Batok, you know, lock the gates, keep the troops behind the wire, don't let them out so none of this can happen again. But that's not partnership. That's not what Kenyan uh, businesses want here in Nanuki. They want to be able to do business with our troops. So actually, I'm afraid the answer is much more complicated because what this answer is is about saying to our armed forces that when they come here to train, the mindset needs to be the same as when they operate. I'm very proud of the way that when British armed forces operate in some very challenging parts of the world, as they are on the UN peacekeeping mission in Mali right now. They train and they understand that they need to respect all parts of the community, men, women, children, that they must live the values that they are standing up for when they're there with the blue beret of the UN on their head. And actually, when they come here to train, the mindset should be no different. Those who we have the privilege to meet uh, in the community here in Nanuki, our hosts here in Kenya, need to be respected in exactly the same way as we would do if we were on operations. And I hope that we can make that message clear to everybody within the Army, Navy and the Air Force, that their behaviour here reflects the United Kingdom, their, their behaviour here reflects the traditions of the British Armed Forces, and that what's happened here, what is alleged to have happened here, frankly, has let down the British Armed Forces, and we want to rebuild those relationships, rebuild trust, because the UK-Kenya relationship is so important to both countries in a region where, right now, this relationship needs to be working hard to deliver stability in East Africa, and I think that you know, everybody involved needs to sort of just make sure that that's the priority, and that we just respect each other, and we make sure we get this right in the future. Do you think there was a cover-up? Um, Do you think there was a cover-up since it's said that our senior military officials knew that this case happened, but it's taken nine years for it to get I, here? I honestly don't know, to be, to be completely honest with you, uh, but I am making damn sure that I find out. So, uh, have you had one already, sir? I, I wanted to ask, uh, we took the rock from it, and uh, nobody seems to have a clue how you arrived at the rock that we have made to the 
within the county government, yeah? Would uh, you mind uh, taking off your mask so I can hear you, sir? Sorry. Yes. Uh, my name is Joe I work for Standard Media. Yeah. Nobody seems to have a clue how you arrived at the local representative you have met. Even the local governor says he didn't have an invite. So oh, have as in who was invited to come? Yes. Uh, my colleagues here in Batok arranged the attendance of the meeting this evening. Uh, I'm confident that it represented a good cross-section of the community. Certainly their questioning was uh, robust, um, far more robust than some of the questioning I've had in the UK House of Commons. And I hope that they've left reflecting on some honest answers. Some of the answers weren't necessarily the ones they wanted to hear, but they came in order to hear what I had to say, to hear the view of the British government, and I hope that they go away having had that. Um, there have been lots of opportunities for politicians here in uh, Nanuki and Waikipia County to meet with my colleague, the High Commissioner. She spent the afternoon with many of them, and I know that there won't be a single one of them that she wouldn't be willing to meet uh, in the days ahead. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you.